In this video, I'm going to show you how we can create this fire portrait using Photoshop. So let's get started. Hey what's up guys, Drool here and as you can see this is the final output. Now as you can see we have a lot of fire and also a little bit of particles going on. Now for this effect, I will be using this stock photo that I found on deviantart.com and also I will be using this fire photo and this particle photo and all these images are from deviantart.com and if you want to use them the download link is in video description so feel free to use it so to create this effect first of all I'm gonna select my crop tool from here and I will make it a little bit bigger from both sides so that we have enough space uh, to introduce fire and then I'm gonna go and confirm it also we need to make him a little bit smaller so after that go and press Control T and then hold your shift key and make him a little bit smaller uh, yeah that's enough and confirm it and now go and select your move tool from here and you can move it a little bit here yeah in center looks good now like almost every effect we have to cut him out from the background and for that I'm gonna go and right click here and select my quick selection tool from here and I will make my brush bigger using my bracket keys so that's big enough and make a selection now the area is selected but we need to remove it from some unnecessary area so for that you can go and click on this minus option and now you can remove it just like you added it Now it can get little difficult to remove it from inside the fingers so for that you right click here and then you select magic wand tool and make sure your option is third one and then you do a simple click and it will be done. So the selection is ready and now we can apply the layer mask so for that go and click on this third icon here so we have a layer mask. Now I'm gonna go and create a new blank layer from the second last icon and put it under my model layer here. Then select my paint bucket tool right click paint bucket tool. Uh, and go and select my black color and fill it after that you go and double click on your background layer and then you select gradient overlay and in the gradient you go here and instead of this black color you click here and in the color option you change it to really darker red something like this you hit ok then you go to your white color here and then you click here uh, to change the color to a little bit of brighter red, not too much bright okay but yeah that's more than enough and then hit ok and here hit ok then in the style go and change it to radial and go and reverse it so we have this outside the darker area and make it scale as big as possible so yeah that, that looks good and change the opacity to somewhere around like 20% and hit ok now the background and subject both are ready so we can add in the fire and to do that you go to file menu and you go and select place and in the place select the fire image that you downloaded and go and place it and confirm it. So my fire image is already under my model as you can see here and now I'm gonna go and change its blending mode to what you call screen so we can get rid of the black background. Now first thing I will do is I will right click and select rasterize this layer so we can use eraser that's good now press ctrl T hold your shift key and make it smaller like this this small a uh, little bit more won't hurt so that looks good now if I look here as you can see it's a little bit harsh so go and confirm your selection uh, transform first so it, it's really sharp so for that go and select your eraser tool from here and here make sure your hardness is 0% and then you go and erase it a little bit from here so now it's looking better and I'm gonna go and select my move tool from here and move it exactly here somewhere yeah so that's that's looking pretty good you can use ctrl T and rotate it a little bit if you like uh, so that's looking pretty good and I'm gonna go and confirm it now we have to make a copy of it so for that press ctrl J and then I will put this copy here and then press ctrl T and I'm gonna go and remove uh, rotate it a little bit and then I'm gonna go and confirm it from here now important tip when you copy fires like this uh, this will show that you have used the same layer multiple times so what you do when you make a copy select eraser and remove this kind of particles so now it seems like that it blends better see just like that 
now i'm gonna make another copy Control j uh, and then i will go and move this one here like this So as you can see now we have entire background covered in fire but at this point you will also have a lot of fire layers as you can see here. So what do you do you click on your first fire here hold your shift key and click on the last fire. Afterwards you go and press ctrl G. Uh, so this way you have that in single group and you can manage it easily nothing else. So this is looking good. After that I'm gonna go and create new adjustment layer and then I will select hue saturation. And first thing I will do is I will click on this option so it would only affect my fire group here. So in the hue saturation I will go here and change my hue to 12 because I like the, this color better on fire. Then close it. And you also have to make sure that your group, this fire group that also has blending mode on screen. So you can make sure everything is transparent. So the fire effect is ready and we can start adding in the particle. Uh, so for that select your hue saturation and create a new blank layer on top of that but under your model layer here. Then you go to file, uh, go and select place and in the place you go and select your particles and then I will go and confirm it. Now I'm gonna go and change its blending mode to screen obviously. Then I will press ctrl T, uh, rotate it a little bit like this, uh, make them a bit smaller and put it here like that. Uh, then I'm gonna go and confirm it. Now it looks more like a square. So first of all I will right click on my uh, layer and then I will select rasterize. Then select my eraser tool as you can see here and remove it from some parts here like that. Now it looks much better. Then you go to filter, blur and then you go and select motion blur. And motion blur somewhere around like 20-30% is better so 20 looks good. Then you go and hit ok. And now just like fire I will make multiple copies of it so I'm going to press ctrl J and then I will select my move tool from here and move my particles a little bit here and then ctrl T and rotate them so it doesn't look more repetitive uh, just like that and confirm it make another copy. So the particles are ready and just like the fire select your first particle layer hold your shift key and click on the last one and then you can press ctrl G. So now fire and particle work is done and we can start working on the model. So for that first thing you have to do is hold down your ctrl key and click on this layer mask here. Uh, as you can see my arrow click. So you have selection. Now comes the important part let me zoom in a little bit. So here as you can see we have selection. After that I will go to my select menu, uh, modify and then I will go and select this contract option. And I will select my number to 10 and hit ok. So the selection is little bit inside. Now zoom out. Afterwards uh, make sure you have selected your main layer 0. Go to your adjustment layer and select hue and saturation. So as you can see hue saturation also has this mask. After that go and change your uh, lightness to minus 100%, close it and change its blending mode to overlay. So this way we also have this rim light but it's really sharp you see. So for that select your layer mask of your saturation layer. You go to filter, blur and then you go and select Gaussian blur. Now if I turn it on and off as you can see now it's much more softer and better. You can, can count it down a little bit if you want a bit sharper effect. So I think uh, 16 looks good uh, somewhere around and hit ok. Now if I zoom out uh, we have our darkness ready. Now we also have to make our rim light a more colorful. So for that make sure you have selected your layer 0 here. Then you go and double click and select inner glow. And in the inner glow make sure your color is somewhere bright orange uh, because we need that type of rim light. A uh, bit yellowish would be better. Yeah that. Hit ok. And then you go and increase the size a little bit. So that we can see it better. Yeah much better. Uh, and also increase the opacity if you want even more intense look. Uh, but that's too much. So this is looking better. And after that go and hit ok. 
Now the effect is looking good, but I don't want it on his head because it doesn't look good. So what do you do? You right click on your FX option here, exactly here. You right click and then you select create layer. So as you can see now your layer style, it's on a different layer, which is really important. So select this, select your eraser and now you can erase it from its head. So it doesn't go anywhere. And now if I turn it on and off, see now it looks much better. Now this is looking good, but we also have to apply some color correction. And for that, you first of all right click and then you select create clipping mask. So it's in the link, right? These two things only affect the model, not the background. And the same manner, I will go and create new adjustment layer and I will select color balance. And in the color balance, just like all right click and create clipping mask. And then I will go and increase my red a little bit in my mid tones. Then I will go to my highlights and I will increase a little bit of a yellow. Uh, so the color starts to match a little bit, looks good, close it. After that, I will go and create new adjustment layer and select a solid. And in the solid, just like, uh, I'm gonna go and select bright orange color, hit OK, and you know, change the blending mode to soft light. Now, now it's, it's really strong. So you go and change the opacity to somewhere around 20-30%. Uh, Turn it on and off. Yep, now it looks better. And then you right click and create clipping mask. So now it only affects the model. And here comes the best part. Uh, you have this your fire here, right? In separate group. So you make a copy of it. Control J. It will remove your clipping mask, but don't worry. You go and put this fire on top of everything here. And here we got rid of the clipping mask, right? So you right click and turn on the create clipping mask. So it's only on the fire. So the fire we have here, right? Uh, this fire, now it's everywhere. So you go and apply a layer mask on your group. You can do that on group, see, it's fun. <laughs> so apply a layer mask, select your brush tool from here and in the option, uh, in the color, sorry, make sure it's black color. And then uh, also here, make sure your hardness is 0% and then you erase it from here. And also make sure your opacity, it's 100% and you are painting on layer mask so you go and remove it from the places where you don't want it so i think from here like this a little bit from here and there uh yeah not not don't remove it from everywhere okay keep it a little bit on body parts like that and just in case if you didn't know uh, you can go and change the color to white and you can bring it back just if you make a mistake and you can go back to black and remove it from where you don't want it so i'm going to turn it off a little bit here a little bit here and now if i turn it on and off see it makes the entire effect uh, like really good so a little bit remove from there and after once this is done you go and create new adjustment layer and then you select brightness and contrast and i'm going to make it a little bit brighter like that so you know that intensity from fire that looks good and then you go and change the contrast to somewhere around like a little bit but don't do too much contrast it, it ruins the effect so that's looking good and close it now if you look at the face it's like really really red so to get a solution for that what makes it red our hue saturation see it makes it red so you select the layer mask here uh, you we already have brush and black color but this time you go and change the opacity to like 20 30 percent and then you go and do a simple click. See, now the redness is gone because the effect is little less on the face now and you can do it one more time. So now that is looking much, much better. So this is the final output and I really wanted to show you that how we can use one single image and create entire effect out of this. And I really hope that you guys learned something from this video. If you did, hit that like button. And if you have any kind of questions or suggestions, uh, feel free to ask me in comment section below. Till then, goodbye, take care and have some fun with Photoshop.